researchers have documented at least five other species that also seem to grow preferentially on soils formed by kimberlite or with a nearly identical mineral profile. Each of them in its own way has adapted to survive in these rare conditions, becoming a kind of natural compass for anyone searching for hidden diamonds. And the next plant on our list is a truly fascinating one, often overlooked for its simple appearance, but carrying a name that hints at something much bigger. Lagenocarpus adamantinus, also known as diamond grass. The small herbaceous grass with its fine, delicate leaves might seem like just another ordinary plant covering the fields. However, for geologists and botanists trained to recognize subtle environmental clues, the presence of this plant in certain areas can be the very first sign that kimberlite, and possibly diamonds, might be hiding just below the surface. This unique variety has been studied in greater depth by Brazilian researchers, especially in regions like the Cerrado and the highlands of central Brazil. These studies were part of major projects like Rodem Brasil, an academic research conducted by the University of Brasilia and the Federal University of Minas Gerais. Lagenocarpus adamantinus has a highly specific ecological preference. It naturally occurs only in certain types of rocky outcrops, particularly those derived from quartzite or, even more significantly, from weathered kimberlite bodies. In other words, it acts as a pioneer colonizer, one of the first representatives of the native flora to settle in areas where the surface shows signs of ancient geological shifts involving kimberlite exposure, something extremely rare. What makes this species even more interesting for gemstone prospecting is its specialized nutritional needs. Botanical studies show that diamond grass thrives best in soils naturally enriched with high levels of magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus, the very minerals released as kimberlite weathers over thousands of years. It also seems to tolerate and even prefer soils containing significant amounts of nickel and iron, two elements commonly found in ultramafic rocks like kimberlite. In poorer soils or those lacking this specific chemical profile, this species struggles to survive and tends to grow in small, stunted patches. Ecologically speaking, this representative of the regional flora has an extremely limited distribution. It grows in small clusters and rarely forms extensive vegetative mats, which makes its presence even more significant when detected during field surveys. In fact, in certain regions of Brazil, Lagenocarpus adamantinus is considered a vulnerable species due to its narrow habitat range and the ongoing degradation of its natural environment. It usually appears in rocky clearings or along the edges of quartzite formations where low-growing vegetation predominates. And it's precisely in these spots where, with careful observation,